Hi everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live event today. My name's Katie Evans and I'm a specialist practitioner with Dementia Carers Count. I'm joined today by my colleague Kate Legg, who's an occupational therapist. And the session today is part of our launch program with the Virtual Carers Centre. This has been developed with carers and health and care professionals. It includes resources for family carers that are available anytime, day or night, which is accessible through our website. It covers lots of different topics around dementia care, which we hope are really helpful for, for carers. Our topic today is music and dementia care and how it can have benefits and help people to connect. If you've got any comments or questions, please pop them in the chat box as we'd love to hear from you. And if there's anything that we don't get to answer in this time, we'll try and get back to you as soon as we can. Um, so music as a subject is a very powerful tool within dementia care. Its influence goes back centuries and we can think of times during the World Wars, for example, where soldiers were helped by musicians to help them through particular traumas. Um, we know there's lots of research in terms of music and its benefits for dementia care. Um, it can help with quality of life and help improve um, for carers as well as for the person with dementia. It can help us to, to lighten our moods help create connections and reduce stress, but importantly as well, help bring back some memories. So Kate, as, a, as an occupational therapist yourself, what's been your experience of music in dementia care? Oh, thank you, Katie. Um, yeah, as an, as an occupational therapist, music something I've um, used a lot. Um, and also, to be fair, just even in my personal life, singing and music is a big part of what I do. But um, certainly um, in, in occupational therapy, we try and get people engaged in activities. And um, music is a great one for that because it's so universal and, and everybody, really, uh, pretty much everybody has yeah. got some memories or experiences associated with music, even if it's just from what they learn as a child. Um, or for things that they do as enjoyment. So some, you know, people listen to particular styles of music or they might play instruments. Um, so in terms of what I've seen, um, I've done lots of work in, in groups. Um, so group singing groups or groups in hospitals or care homes or out in the community where people come together and share music. Um, I've used it individually as well for people looking at mm. um, trying to increase their well-being or maybe tailor it more specifically. Um, and I think particularly in dementia care, it's it's always been a really um, good activity because it's it's something that people are able to do. So very, very often um, people may be really struggling with a lot of activities or even with communication, um, yet they can do music or they can listen or they can sing. Um, yeah. So it's always been a really positive thing. And, and, and you know, pretty much always makes people feel better um, yeah. and increases well-being so you know it's a really lovely um, activity to, to use. Yeah so what what types of activities would you do in the hospital setting Kate? Well we've done all sorts um, so we've done we've done groups where we um, encourage people to sing songs together. So some of the things might be really so singing or group or music sometimes is related to particular areas. So quite often in faith situations or religious situations like churches, yeah. um, or even like in particular communities, there's the specific music or or things that um, people relate to. So certainly for many years, uh, we used to run what we used to call a chapel service, where yeah we used old hymns and traditional songs because it for the people that we had it with us at that time that was what they knew um because yeah. actually most schools I think for many many years sang particular songs um in the mornings and I don't know if they still do um probably slightly different songs but you know so quite a mm -hmm. lot of it uh, triggered for memories so certainly we used it for that um but for individuals, um, usually as an, as an activity that people could engage with. So if they were feeling particularly low or if they were a little bit stressed or a little bit agitated, then it may be that you can use music that soothes them. 
um, equally if they're struggling to get going or they're um, you know really sleepy or um, things like that you could try music that's a bit more stimulatory um, yeah. but mostly for fun and for enjoyment and for connection yeah I mean and for relaxation as well and so, and so mm -hmm. equally for carers and for people that are are working um you know if you're working with somebody if you it, music really kind of enables you to connect and yeah. so that is beneficial for for everybody really if you're if you're um with somebody and you're feeling like you're connecting yeah I mean certainly as a as a social worker in the local community um often people would use music when somebody lived alone so we'd encourage if if somebody with dementia had a particular um, taste, then they would put those songs on for them whilst they were on their own in the in the house, and they would help to reduce isolation, help them to to feel connected, which, as you say, is a is a very important part of it. Um, we've got a question that's come through. Um, it says, my dad has sensory issues and music can really upset him. It has to be really quiet and only when we're in the living room with nothing else happening, but it doesn't seem to make him happy. Okay, yeah, I, I think I think it's, as much as we're being really positive about how wonderful music is, I think it is still important to be aware that it, that it, it isn't always. Um, yeah. So I think I'd think about what the sensory issues are, because you do have to be aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. And it may be that for some reason, the, the level of noise or the vibration um, is too much for people. So I think look out for if you're doing activities with people mm -hmm. and they don't look like they're enjoying it, then kind of read the signs and, and, and don't pursue it. Um, or maybe look at, um, is it something about, you have to do a bit of investigation, really. is it something about mm -hmm. the so the particular songs? Um, is it something about the style? Because if you've got something that's very beaty, do you know what I mean? Where it's got a real dun 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 dun, yeah. that might not be very comfortable. Um, so you might want to vary the type of music. And also, like you say, about where you're you're doing it, because mm. some rooms might make it feel more echoey. Yeah. Um, so kind of explore a bit more about what's happening from a sensory point of view. Try different areas. Um, and also the the, the the thing about making him not happy is again it's another difficult one because sometimes music does make you feel sad um because it might mm. remind you of things um but that's not necessarily a bad thing if if people people sometimes need that opportunity to actually be sad because i quite often have seen um people where we've put music on and they started crying and your yeah. first reaction is oh my gosh they're crying i've upset them but actually it maybe it's just cathartic for them and so we've had some people say to oh yes i am crying but it's okay yeah so um, so yeah the message i suppose is if you really think somebody's unhappy don't pursue it but equally try and investigate a little bit more about what's happening and try different things yeah i mean perhaps in this in this question perhaps it's about the environment as well perhaps there's other noises in the room at that time that are making it perhaps too distracting if say the telly's on and then the radio's on in another room perhaps it's too much noise or if as a family maybe you're having a chat over the music that could be a, a little bit distracting can't it and and cause some some distress or non-engagement really with the the music yeah. um we've got another question that's come through mm -hmm. um it says how come mum can't remember me but can still play her violin i love that she can but it just totally confuses me uh yeah i think i think i mean broadly that's down to kind of the way things are stored in memory and skills yeah. so um it's, it's stored in different parts of the brain so a skill i mean learning some something like learning a violin is a really really well rehearsed yeah. skill that somebody's built up over a long period of time so it's got a very very big imprint as such yeah. in your brain um and so often those really really well learned skills are you know stay for quite a long time um and then other parts of other parts of memory which may be to do with facial recognition or looking at or recognizing people are possibly in different parts of the brain or maybe um stored in a slightly different way so yeah. so it does vary it varies on on where in the brain um 
that people are, are affected by dementia but also yeah. what skills you're using for particular activities and it and it is it is different um one of the things just thinking about skills particularly one of the things to be aware of often is if people were particularly skilled or very very skilled mm. in something say for example violin playing if they feel when they're trying to then play the violin that they're not able to do it as well as they used to if they've got an awareness of that sometimes yeah. that can be quite distressing so um I've seen examples where people actually um, are distressed because they can't do it as well as they used to yeah and so yeah. we would maybe suggest then that they don't um but yeah. equally there are other people who are very skilled and are not managing as well as they used to but are still really enjoying yeah. it yeah so I mean... there's no right or wrong answer about whether they should continue or not yeah the the violin is is such a specific skill as you say and it it did make me think of the 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 video that's online about maria gonzalez the prima ballerina oh, okay who, yeah um had a lot of communication difficulties and somebody put on a recording of swan lake and she started to move and started to sort of go back to that time in her life and started to, to dance. It's a very powerful moving video, but I can understand for, for you feeling that, isn't it? That's, that your mum couldn't remember you, but can remember that learned skill, which is part of, of that side of her, her memory. We've got another, another question. Um, my husband was having trouble sleeping and we now listen to some music before bed. It helps him really relax. He goes back to bed quite, oh, he goes to bed quite early because he would get agitated before. Yeah, lovely. So again, music, you have to think about what your purpose of using the music is. So sometimes yeah. you might be using music to stimulate and to, you know, wake people up and make people feel good. Um, but equally, you might want to use it to soothe people. Yeah. Um, so obviously you choose quite carefully what music you use. Um, but and certainly um, it's been used um, in cases of sundowning, which is where somebody gets more agitated before bed or as the kind of sun goes down. Um, and so quite often having a routine which involves relaxing or soothing music. So it doesn't always have to be music. It may be, sa it may be sounds. Yeah. Um, it's quite useful. So thank you. That's really, it's really good to know that, that that's... Um, yeah, that that's working well and, yeah. and set in the scene often, isn't it? So... So it's getting darker, putting on yeah. relaxing, soothing music can help somebody feel feel more prepared for for that time. And and although it's earlier because of the the darker nights, isn't it? It gets getting yeah. dark very early at the moment. So um, yeah, perhaps it's then needing to to have wanted to go to bed earlier. Um, we've been asked what other activities we find helpful. Okay. Um, I think. I mean, I think there's no there's no kind of list of what's good and what's not good. I think the key to it um, is about what's meaningful for that person. Um, mm. So, um, and we do do just a bit of a plug a session about looking at meaningful activities. Um, yeah. As a separate session, but really, an activity that is meaningful for that person, is, you're likely to get them to engage with. So. You know, if you tried to get me to go fishing and um, my brothers used to when I was a little girl, <laughs> I would be miserable and hate it and not want to join in. But if if you tried to get me to do something, mean, I actually like activities related to music and singing. And, if you know, if you took me along to a choir and stuff, I'd be right there. So um, kind of knowing that person's background, their history, their personality and the things that they've enjoyed. Um, and then thinking about making it accessible for them or making it easier for them to participate in is usually um, is, is usually key. And, and just varying and just seeing what works yeah. and what doesn't work. Um, yeah. Because also you might try something on one day and you get a completely negative, uninterested response. And then you might try it a few hours later and get a completely different response. So yeah. um, and yeah, and, and also looking at what people have done before. So if people have done singing in the past or if they've done particular mm -hmm. musical instruments in the past or if they've done particular activities in the past then you know they're likely to 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 enjoy those if they've never yeah. done you know if somebody has never done singing before or never done then you know maybe that that's not what they enjoy so 
yeah it has to I be mean, meaningful for that person that's that's absolutely true isn't it because as as we know meeting one person with dementia is meeting one person with dementia and it's so individual and we we need to think of of what can really work for them in their in their care plan in their support network what really really works but i i do sort of have one recollection of somebody who used to started attending a, a day center and started doing some cooking activities and his wife said he's never cooked in his, <laughs> in his life. but then doing the sensory so doing some baking using different utensils was really beneficial so so sometimes it's about being a little bit thinking outside the box isn't it of maybe other things that might might help um we've got another question uh, my husband has significant hearing loss. Is there anything you can suggest that may help him have enjoyment in his favourite music? Okay, yeah. Yeah, similar sort of things we were thinking about with sensory deficits before. I think um, yeah. looking into what, what the difficulty is, say, with his hearing and uh, make sure that you're um, using everything you can to help with that. So if they've got hearing aids or if yeah. um, there are particular... Um, things they use to try and you know get the hearing as well as possible using that um sort of thing um it may be that using like headphones where the music is more direct i mean that, that again yeah. that's one it may or may not work so it may be that that's lovely but equally it may be that it's too much yeah. Yeah. um so kind of keeping a check on that um i mean you can use music in other ways so you can you you can think of the other senses so you can watch things um, it may be that you can get them up dancing um, yeah. because you've got the movement. It may be that if you're using instruments um, like um, tambourines and things like that, yeah. you're feeling that vibration. So even if you're listening to yeah. a, a piece of rhythm. music, even if you're doing the rhythm on the tambourine, then yeah. they're feeling that um, vibration and that, that sensation. So kind of thinking about... Um, other, other basically using the other senses so what can they yeah. see can they get involved in movement can they um hear to a hear to a degree can yeah. they watch stuff can they um you know you might even just have a memory uh, some pictures of of particular you know concerts or things that just prompt memory so kind of trying to use the other senses i suppose yeah yeah i mean that um i know with with concerts with big football matches rugby matches obviously it's anthems isn't it and, yeah. and perhaps that invokes a musical memory to help with with engagement but um i mean there's some some really good sort of ideas out there isn't it about reminiscence with music and even showing some pictures of people from certain generations that that somebody may have loved a band or a, a singer yeah. a, a particular famous concert like live live aid maybe as well um, we've got another comment. I actually think for my mum, music can create false memories and confusion. Yeah, I think um, I think it's, pro it's, pr it's probably prompting something, isn't it? So um, I, I wouldn't worry too much about whether it's false, because actually for that person, yeah. it, it's a memory of some sort um, yeah. and the details of it might not be correct. Um, but actually, it's still a memory, and it and it's pro it's, pro it's promoted it's pr prompted something, um, and hopefully yeah. an emotion um, related to that. So it may be that they feel positive about it, even if they don't know the details. Um, confusion, yeah. I can imagine, in terms of time, um, it may confuse people about where they're at in time. Um, but again, I wouldn't worry about that too much because it's about the enjoyment of the activity at the time. And so yeah. if they're getting some comfort from something that's familiar, um, yeah. that's the kind of thing to focus on, really, um, uh, rather than on um, the confusion. I mean, I, I suppose the other thing about confusion is thinking about what songs you're playing and are there particular songs that cause that? Or is it because it may be that you might want to steer away from particular songs if they're causing that? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, or is it is it perhaps the time of day that maybe the the music's being heard, which which isn't maybe a good time for 
for the lady, isn't there? Mm. Um, we've got a, a comment. As a full-time worker and a carer, all of this stuff just stresses me out. I feel like I always have to be doing something with my mum and I just can't keep up. Yeah, th thank you for that. that. That's a really important point. I think I hear that quite a lot, actually, particularly as an occupational therapist, when you're going in and suggesting activities, that yeah. actually the, the stress of having to try and do these activities is just additional stress. Um, and so I think probably my, my thoughts on that are don't give yourself a hard time about what you can and can't do because yeah. um, anything that you can do is great. Um, so if you can think of some activities that don't necessarily involve you to be directly involved. So again, for music, it may be that you set up a playlist mm -hmm. um, and then you just play that playlist. You don't necessarily have to sit and be there throughout the whole thing. So I think some people have found that useful where they leave you know the person they're caring for with the music yeah um, and also don't feel pressure that you have to do it for a huge amount of time because often carers visit or you know might go and visit or family might go and visit and think oh my gosh I'm there for an hour and I have to you know fill this whole hour mm -hmm. or I need to get mum engaged in this activity for all this time um, but actually for for that individual that actually might be too much and it may be that yeah. just a few minutes of an activity where they're really engaged is is more beneficial than a really long activity. So yeah. don't feel pressured that you have to fill the whole 45 minutes and that you have to keep mum entertained yeah. this whole time. Um, because bear in mind as well that actually the likelihood is that she'll find it really tiring to be engaging in activities and, do, and will actually need some downtime. Um, so maybe they've put a lot of effort into concentrating for 10, 15 minutes, but then actually they need 45 minutes after to mm -hmm. um, kind of relax and, you know catch up themselves so kind of try not to put yourself under too much pressure um yeah and think about for you what's what you know what's helpful for you are the things that you can do for yourself that um you know maybe help with your stress levels um yeah. so yeah getting some time for yourself some activities for yourself yeah and it's also exploring what could be out there as well that could offer some of these activities rather than taking all yeah. the pressure on yourself that's a good point it's, actually yeah and I mean the, the voluntary agencies out there obviously there's there's social services input as well to try and and take some of that onus of, off you as a as a carer um, we've got another comment. Are there any good resources about introduce, introducing music into a hospital environment? OK, yeah. So, I mean, there are great resources out there. We were going to put some um, links into the chat box about other yeah. um, organisations and charities and groups that and apps and things that um, help with music, certainly things like play, look, putting together playlists. Um, yeah. and things like that I mean in terms of hospital environment I think it's probably about looking at what access they have so um, for example I mean do they have wi-fi can you connect to yeah. the internet can you get onto um so so some of the hospitals i've worked in didn't have wi-fi so anything that was yeah. internet based you couldn't do um so you had to rely on stuff that you had to download um but the thing that we use quite often in, in a hospital environment was stuff that you can get through the television because we didn't yeah. have Wi-Fi. Um, yeah. But you could log into um, particular channels on the television or radio stations on the on the yeah. television. Um, you used to years ago um, be able to get things like DVDs that you play mm. that have like a image or something from them, like a fish tank yeah. or a fireplace and there's music in the background but I think these days that sort of stuff most of that sort of stuff you can get through tv and through all the different yeah. streaming channels and all the different um apps on television um and so really it's looking at the environment and looking at what you have available I mean you know there's been days when I've turned up on a ward with a cd player and cds yeah um, and not that long ago not that long ago so yeah. no, um, it still happens Kate I've seen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just turn up on that. I mean, the other thing actually for um, the other thing is there's so many voluntary agencies out there or groups or quite often universities or mm. school groups or music groups who go to places and do live yeah. music. Um, yeah. So if you're near a university, quite often universities that have music as part of the university, their students go out and do um, live music in yeah. environments of so care homes and um, 
hospitals. So um, yeah, there's there's so many there's so many charities and organisations out there that that promote music. So yeah, yeah, have a look. And I'm I'm just thinking of of the hospital that I worked in, where a specific ward um, applied with the local supermarket for for the small grants. Oh yeah, yeah. So that they could get some of the the equipment to help them. So so perhaps that's an option in in the local area as well. Yeah, I was thinking so about in the hospital trying to find spaces that because hospitals are so noisy, aren't they? And again, back to yeah. that thing about being careful that you don't overstimulate. Because if you're in a, a I don't know a particular area that's got things beeping and um, you know lots of trolleys going past or having music yeah. as well might just be a little bit too much yeah. um so it may be that you have to think okay we are going to play music but we're going to play it in this room here where we've got less noise um because yeah. you don't don't just think yeah music's great let's stick it on because it's just it might be too much yeah i find that sometimes in supermarkets like if you go into a supermarket and you're trying to concentrate on your shopping and you're distracted <laughs> by music in the background yeah. and sometimes you think actually yeah there's a time and a place <laughs> yeah <laughs> music is great yeah, but sometimes I don't want to hear it all the time I don't yeah. want to hear it all the time so That's just bear true. that in mind yeah um we've got another comment my auntie was a singer but now doesn't seem to want to sing anymore why could that be yeah I mean that could be it could be many reasons really it could be back to what we were saying earlier about if you know you've done something really well before and then you feel yeah. that you're not doing it as well that can be quite demoralizing um and so you might feel like you're not able to do it as well and so you don't want to do it yeah. it could be that there's other things stopping them so it could be um that because they you know not feeling as well as they were or not doing things as well as they were um they can't access it in the same way so for example if they yeah. used to go to choir um, it may be that actually the experience of going to choir is too much because there might yeah. be too much noise, the practicalities of getting there, they might not feel very well. And so then that puts them off the singing activity. So again, just kind of exploring a little bit about um, what's going on. Um, yeah. And accepting that actually it, it, people might feel sad because yeah. um, they can't do it the way they used to. And, you know, can they enjoy it in other ways? So can they just listen? Or can they hear other people or you know are there other ways you can use music yeah. i know a lady that i worked with who had some communication changes and she was a singer and whenever she tried to sing she'd get really upset and, yeah. but then dancing was still really important to her and she was able to dance and that that leads me on to to Jenny saying my mum just loves the Zumba <laughs> class uh, <laughs> dance is just as important as the music for her and the body movement just gives us so much joy oh, that's yeah lovely. that's a really good point actually and we haven't yeah. touched on that because actually music is not just about singing it is also about dance and movement yeah um, absolutely and, yeah I mean who can't resist a bit of a sort of you know jiggle yeah. along when when there's particular music on so definitely music stimulates um movement and often it's easier sometimes if you're trying to get somebody to do something rather than be giving them verbal instructions yeah. about doing something sometimes if you're just using music and you're moving more naturally um that really helps so yeah no that's yeah. lovely yeah and that, you know we've seen where it can help within personal care as well yeah. and, and hopefully we've got a session that's going to be more in depth on music and the benefits because we're we're just about running out of time <laughs> very quick today yeah um so thank you everyone for for coming and we've really enjoyed talking to you today and thank you for all your comments and questions um please have a look on our website to see if anything would be of of use and any live sessions you may like to attend um the sessions on the first of february i believe for for music in dementia care and the benefits um, we also have some other live online sessions, including information about the brain and dementia, why dementia is different for everybody and taking care of yourself as a carer. 
please send us any feedback and or email us if you think there's anything else you would like to to add or share or anything you'd like to see from dementia carers count so many thanks everyone thanks bye. everyone take care bye bye bye, -bye. bye.